Hi, this is a quick video. Um, what we want to show here is we want to show you how to uh, Photoshop specimens. In this case, um, we took these with our uh, laboratory setup, which we have videos of elsewhere. And what we want to do is show you the routine from going from a TIFF file to a camera raw to Photoshop, getting rid of the pin, cleaning up lint, getting rid of features that don't need to be in there, and creating a solid black background that's ready to go into a, another um, program such as PowerPoint. Okay, what we want to do today is take a picture of a bee that we've taken in our uh, photo studio. We have a PDF. If you would like to get that, you can just e email us directly. And uh, we want to take it through um, to Photoshop to get rid of the pin and get rid of the dirt on the specimen. So we've opened this up in um, in uh, Photoshop Bridge or Adobe Bridge, and we're going to right mouse it, and we're going to open it up in Camera Raw first before going to Photoshop, which has advantages in uh, flexibility of making corrections. Here's the Camera Raw working screen. I'm going to open this up more completely. And what we want to do first is go to the sharpening screen where these buttons are, and we want to sharpen this to the level of all the way to the top, 150, um, I don't know if that's percent, and then the radius is 1.9. For our pictures, this is what we've found makes the um, best ultimate picture for how our uh, camera rig is set up. Uh, these are set as defaults when we normally do it. For here, we just set it so that you can see what we kind of changes we make. Now we're going back to the basic screen, and you can see when you look at the RGB numbers that the background here is not completely black. It should be 000, and that's what we want to go for because having a completely black background will allow us to dump this picture into totally black backgrounds in a graphics program and have the borders disappear. You can also see here in the histogram all these pixels are out uh, to the left of the left line and not uh, visible. So what we want to do first is play with the, we want to eliminate that, make that into zeros. First thing is play with the exposure. I'm going to brighten this picture a little bit up so that you can see the integument a little better in this specimen. And then what we're going to do is move all these pixels off screen by using the black slider here to the left. And they have just disappeared now. You can see these are all zero, these sections here in that area, meaning this is now completely black. Next, we'll go down to clarity. We're going to pop that clarity up a bit. That gives us a little more definition here of the surface features. Um, I'm going to play with contrast. This sometimes make a difference, sometimes doesn't. Doesn't seem to, in this particular picture, do much for us, so I'm going to leave it a little bit high. I'm going to change the vibrance up to make the colors a little bit deeper, and I'm going to change the saturation to maybe 0.3. If you'd use this all the time, you can set them as defaults, and then you don't have to do it again. Now I'm going to click Open Image to open in Photoshop. OK, here is our specimen now in Photoshop. We're going to use the Paintbrush tool. Um, and it is in black mode, which matches our background, which is now completely black. So we can simply erase the bulk of this pin using the paintbrush, which is set to a very large level. Then we're going to hit the Z for zoom. Zoom in here and take care of more of this pin at a more finer level. V takes us back, and I'm right mousing, taking this down in size so I can get a very fine edge. I'm using the mouse button to click a lot, and you'll notice that the circle that I'm using is one of these fuzzy circles that allows me to get close uh, but not leave an unnatural edge to the black. Okay, I've defined the pin from the specimen. I'm right mousing. I'm bringing it up again so that I can now very quickly get rid of the rest of the pin. Now I'm going to go to the top of the specimen where the pins come out. This is a little more complicated because I've got hairs here. I've got a little bit of a hole where the pin was. So I'm going to wipe out a big chunk here. And now I'm going to go to the um, rubber stamp tool, which is S on the shortcut keys. And I'm going to now press down the Alt button, which fixes 
that location there and I'm going to add back in some of these hairs into this area. And I'm going to do the same from the other side. And I'm going to press down the Alt button, put that in, fill in some of this area, move that back up. And you can see I've done a partially good job, but I've also photo rubber stamped some of the, um, the original pin back in. So I should have cleaned that up first. I didn't. Now I'm just going to zoom in here, Z again, and I'm going to go with B for paintbrush, take it down to very small size, and I'm going to just do some quick cleaning up here. You can also change, if you wanted to, the opacity up here to a, a lesser area, which we might do to get some better definition on the uh, specimen. I'm not going to complete this because I'm going to show you some other things and not eat up all your time watching me do this. Okay, I'm going to hit Z, right mouse, fit on screen. We're back. You can see we've gotten rid of the pin in a pretty good detail. This could be cleaned up a little bit more and I'll probably work on that some later. Now what I want to do is zoom in and um, I'm going to uh, check out the um, J tool, which is the um, stamp um, here, the healing brush, and I'm going to take care of these small white dots. So I've got that. I'm taking care of little bits of uh, grit and fiber on here. Uh, this piece of pollen I can get rid of. I'm holding the mouse down. It does a good job of using the surrounding area to match uh, what is taken out. Um, so I'm going to continue doing that on this picture. I'm not going to show you all of that at this point. And uh, once I'm finished, I'm going to use the crop tool. So I'm going to hit Z, right mouse, fit on screen, C, which is the crop tool. And I'm going to bring this down to that level and bring this up here so that I have black around the edges of all the uh, picture um, a little bit. I don't need to have a lot of black because any background that I use in a graphics program is going to show up um, as seamless if I use a completely black background. So that's another advantage of having uh, black at the blackest level in the picture. So uh, this is basically complete. I'm going to come in later and uh, finish taking care of the, all the white dots that you see here using the uh, healing brush tool. Um, I'm going to right mouse this and hit crop. That's now cropped to the final size. I'm going to click save. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. I'm not going to do this because I still have work to do. Um, and I'm going to, when the JPEG um, uh, screen comes up, I'm going to use the near the maximum, which is 11, which um, saves a lot of the detail um, in the JPEG file, um, but still doesn't um, create a monster large file. So that's pretty much it. Um, here's my one mistake. I left this highlight um, too bright in Camera Raw. I should have fixed that when I had gotten in, um, but I did not. So it's relatively minor, but it is something that we could have taken care of by using the highlighter uh, slider. That's it.